<laughs> God, y'all look beautiful. Stunning. Look yeah, we're beautiful. trying to look a little better than we did on the race. <laughs> we are so bummed to be speaking to the two of you. I feel like you guys were such a strong team. It was so much fun watching the two of you this entire season. How are you both feeling after reliving the experience last night in the episode? You know, I thought it was going to be harder than what it was to rewatch it. But it I don't know, it was beautiful in some ways. You know, it's like that's our story and we have to own it. So we knew all the mistakes that we made in the day. Right. And I think you guys can really relate to that. That concept is not everything gets into the show. So me and Morgan have really just been like, man, if we only did this different this different, this different. And we've had to sit with that for two months. And so we were just really appreciative and like gracious for like the producers portraying our day more, how we experienced it because we really enjoyed that race. That was probably our favorite racing day out of every single day we had done. So it was sad to go, but it was, it was fun watching the show. Y'all are just fun to watch. (laughs) One of my favorite moments from the show of you two was when you did the Witten and you were counting it and you're like, I went to the number one MBA school and I know how to do math. (laughs) I'm just like, give me my props, bro. (laughs) Uh, Well, I want to go back to the very beginning in terms of your journey, getting on to the amazing race. Were you guys always fans of the show? What really inspired you to apply? And was it like a one and done? Or had you applied previously before? So we hadn't applied previously before. I really enjoyed watching the show one summer when I had this really sad internship. And the only thing that was like bringing me through was the amazing race. I had just seen every single episode. I was in love with it. It was funny because I was talking about applying and my sister was like, why would you race with anyone but me? And I was like, well, all we do is fight. (laughs) And she was like, okay. And like, we're going on it together. So I literally got on a plane we made our application video. Our application video was just chaos. You, know? you don't need a perfect video. No, no. You need a video that really shows your relationship to that exactly. person. Which is so hard to do when you're when you're making that video too. Because you just want everything to be perfect. Well, I feel like you guys really made a huge impact very early on in that first episode with the Express Pass. I think it just really set the tone with just how competitive the two of you are. Talk about that experience eating the bugs in Thailand. It was wild. <laughs> we had only been racing for like less than 24 hours. And the whole time while you're doing the race, you're like, I really hope I don't have to do anything that's like, you know, incredibly embarrassing that I'm never going to be able to live down immediately. And uh, they hand us this plate. Like we, we're thinking, oh, they're just going to have us eat a bug like from each box. That's fine. They hand us this huge dinner size plate of bugs. And me and Morgan just looked at each other. We're like, we're going to do this. And she was like, yes. And I, I think production's also looking at us and they're like, that was quick. Like that was incredibly <laughs> quick for two girls to be like, yes, we'll eat this plate of bugs. And like, Morgan ate it so thing. damn fast. What was going through my mind when we started the race and we're shooting the first scene and Phil's asking the team's questions. Lena basically somehow got into a conversation with Phil where Phil's like, yeah, so you're here to find love. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, no, we're not. Why in the world would you ever say that? So when we start eating the bugs, I'm like, oh my God, they're going to have us on national TV saying I'm here looking for love and then stuffing our faces with bugs. Like the second cut is going to be us eating tarantulas. <laughs> Like it was just a mess, but I, we wanted one, we wanted to show people that we were there to compete. Like we're not here to be girly girls that are just, you know, sisters on the race. Like we wanted to be seen as real contenders. And that gave us kind of like out the gate an opportunity to show that we're here to, to really play the game. I think another example of that was when y'all were in India and you had the blind U-turn vote, you guys voted Robin and Chelsea. And then when you were at the stamping roadblock, Morgan, I believe it was you that looked at Anna Lee and said, why would we U-turn you? So talk to us a little bit about like your thought process in the U-turn and why you did ultimately vote Robin and Chelsea. You want to take it, Lena? Oh, yeah, sure. Sure, sure. <laughs> Uh, Annalie and Steve are our friends. We love Annalie and Steve. Um, They're incredibly nice people. And I think people get a little confused because Annalie is a very, very serious racer. Like She's uh, so competitive. Don't play with Annalie on the racetrack. She does not want to play with you. It didn't make sense for us. us. One, to you turn our friends. And obviously, we're not going to like put our friends in front of voting for a u-turn this is a race we're racing for a million dollars we've never been confused about that annalee and steve had over an hour lead and we knew that most likely there would be another equalizer coming up so it's cool that, we have that lead we were Let last. Us- 
Let him be. Let him be. We needed to one vote for somebody that could come hang out with us at the bottom. We voted for Chelsea and Robin because it made more sense for us as a team. And I, I honestly wish we would have done a better job of talking with the teams about like U-turn strategy in general. Uh, we were just hoping that we had made enough friends for people to not look at us at the bottom and be like, let's knock oh, the girls out. Chelsea and Robin were the team that we were not the closest to. It didn't make sense. And every time we've been at a challenge with Chelsea and Robin, besides the tiles, like when we went neck and neck with them at the fish market, we finished first. We just knew that like that was a better cushion for us. Yeah. Don't do the ones that's an hour, mm -hmm. hour and a half ahead of everybody because they're not going to get eliminated. There's no way. Well, yeah. well y'all mentioned that you had a friendship with Steve and Annalise. I want to talk about last night's episode when you were at the Roadblock Morgan you were so encouraging of Anna Lee when she seemed so down and out about where they were in the race and how their leg day was going. Talk about that moment with Anna Lee. So you guys know better than anybody. Like this experience is so unique. It is so special. And if you're lucky enough to have Cass that you actually like spending time with, like it's a beautiful experience. And we love Stephen Anna Lee. That's our Southern family. It was really hard to see Anna Lee that hurt because the day had just started. Lena and I had been at the bottom before. We at that point knew it wasn't emotional. They hadn't had that yet. So I just wanted to remind her like, you have this amazing opportunity and blessing to be doing this with your dad. Give him all the love and support that he needs. Cause you hear yelling, come on dad, come on dad. Y'all don't get to see how much love there is. Like she's just a Southern spicy girl, the same way we're Southern spicy girls. She just needed that love. And unfortunately, like it was our day, but our point of view from the beginning of the race was when it's our day, it will be our day. It was just unfortunate, but that's our girl. I loved it. I loved her. So you, when y'all were skiing, you mentioned like, very nonchalantly that you've been skiing for like 15 <laughs> years or like you've been skiing all your life. Like what experience do you have skiing and was doing it in that parking garage hard? Yeah, Morgan, Morgan can't answer this one because <laughs> she has a different perspective. Okay. So we have gone skiing literally probably once or twice a year for most of our childhood. And Morgan has kept skiing as an adult. I have not made it back to a mountain. So Morgan gets on these skis and they're also cross country skis. They're bigger than, you know, like skis. Morgan gets on the skis and like, she can see that I'm a little wobbly and like her be <laughs> immediate reaction is like, how do you not know how to ski? You're just like <laughs> telling somebody like, how do you not know how to ride a bike? We already knew that it was so neck and neck. So Morgan talking to me and being like, let's go. And the two times that I fell, I fell going up the hill because I was trying to match what the guy was doing, the professional skier, which was dumb. And then the second time I fell, we were taking off our shoes. So we were basically done. But even when I took off my shoes, Morgan turns around. She's like, what is so hard about doing this? And mind you, maybe I should have had a little bit more empathy. But I was like, come on, Lena. Like, it was hard because we were tired. It's physically demanding. And it was cold, which was kind of nice because it was so hot outside. But like, you just had to step and Lena was like waddling and it was just driving me bananas. So it was like, bro, we don't need to be here longer than we need to. Yes. <laughs> that was like the best example of what it's like to have a sibling. <laughs> I think what was so funny too is like our outfits just don't match the skiing at all. Like we're literally in shorts. Like I was like, this is the most country bumpkin skiing I've ever seen. <laughs> I love this entire leg. I mean, it was a first for the amazing race going to the country of Slovenia. Lena, tell us a little bit about the roadblock. How beautiful was it getting that bird's eye view? The plane was gorgeous. Like the view was gorgeous. I was incredibly nauseous. Like from the moment we got up there, because you're just changing pressure so quickly. And obviously that plane is, it, I don't know, it's like a paper plane, basically. It's a it's the bare minimum that you can have to fly. There was nothing in there to like regulate cabin pressure. It was really beautiful, but there was nothing to enjoy because the whole time I was like, I can kind of see out of these binoculars. I can kind of not. So I just, I just felt like that was a moment where like, I really wish I would have been able to finish that task the first time around, because what you don't see in the show is like the first flight is quicker. The second flight is longer. And in that second flight, I was in the plane for so long that like that nausea followed me for quite, quite a minute after the flight. But the castle and the lake is probably one of the coolest. I'm so sad that Morgan didn't see the Buddha in Thailand because she never looked up. She didn't get to see the castle like in the lake. Um, 
it just, it, it felt like a fairy tale. I mean, it, it was so beautiful. And I, I don't know if I recommend anybody who has nausea going on the Expedia <laughs> plane, but um, I do recommend going to Slovenia. Slovenia was breathtaking. I had a good ass time I'm on the floor with my glasses hanging out. <laughs> I love that scene, Morgan, where you're like this. Uh, <laughs> like in my heart, I was like, please tell me this girl got this. And then it was funny watching it last night because I was like, oh my God, what are these numbers? <laughs> like, if I had known what her initial response was, I think we would have had a slightly different day because I would have been pissed. If you can see from the episode, the boats were literally shifting because it's water. And mm -hmm. So what was a very simple task, by the time I got up there, the 1991 was easier to read in the first pass. By the time it got to me, I wasn't sure what direction these boats were even going in. You didn't know what the question was. Yeah. Nines and the sixes, like I had no idea what they were trying to tell me with the lines at the bottom of the numbers. I didn't even see the arrow. Like, and I, I thought we were skydiving. I was like, Morgan, I got this. I'm jumping out of the plane. I was like, I've been waiting to jump out of the plane for that last night. He said, the underline is always under the number. I don't know that. I don't work in a shoe store. So. Yeah, it's like common knowledge, but it's okay. You know what? It's okay. Okay. No, but seriously, it's okay. I thought we were skydiving because we pull up to this place and there's there's a skydiver wearing the colors of John and Greg. So I'm like, oh, it's skydiving. That's John or Greg. That's falling out of the sky. And then once I said yes to doing the challenge and found out it was like a vision challenge, I was like, oh, fuck, I am not the person <laughs> by any means. I was like, and now my stupid ego of wanting to jump out of a plane might cost us a million dollars. Because when she said I want to do it, I was like, you know what? I'm going to let her go. So I didn't even like challenge her yeah. on doing it. Yeah, before we wrap up this interview, we want to talk about the foot race to the finish. Obviously, this looked really intense from the editing. Can you give us just a little sense about how close it actually was and how far behind you were once you got to the pit stop? About a minute. It was hard for us and it was really hard for Steve and Annalie um, because that was not the team that we wanted to be racing to the mat against. And we just kept getting bad directions on the ground. I think for us, it was the hardest city to actually get directions. And it was an English speaking city. So mm. it was, I think we look crazy because my hair was big and curly with the hay and we're running around and like people didn't really want to help us. And it was very difficult to get directions to that bridge. When we saw like Steve and Annalise directions and like how clear they were and how clear a lot of the team's directions were. I mean, we had to have somebody pull it up on a GPS. Like the then time. they oriented us in the opposite direction and like every single person that we asked for directions was like mm. and it was just it was just our luck that the people that we asked didn't really know and then the people that basically did know like they were in groups of like five people and and like we had no time to do like release forms like we were like we're at a foot race like we can't stop and ask this one person that ends up being five people it was a struggle there and you know when we pulled into the city we saw rob and corey going to the skyscraper we saw chelsea and robin right outside of the skyscraper and the second we saw steve and anna lee up at the top of the building we knew we were in trouble we so, were so close to all of the other teams um and it didn't really become apparent that we were like facing elimination until we got into that foot race outside of the skyscraper you know, i hate it well now that your journey on the amazing race has unfortunately come to an end what are your overall thoughts on your experience and are there any highlights or memorable moments that you want to share? Um, Morgan and I had our very best racing day just in terms of like emotionally supporting each other in uh, Slovenia. And I think it spoke to our growth throughout the entire show. Like we had such a fun time racing with each other. We are incredibly supportive in a different way than when we first applied to the show. And we're so grateful to have had the opportunity to share our story as sisters, share a story as our, like about our cousin um, and just grow as sisters and show people like it's never too late to to take a jump and, and learn how to form a new relationship with your best friend. So we're not going anywhere. We're stuck for life. Beautifully yeah. said. <laughs> yeah, and, and I'll make the last point of like when people say how was the race, it was amazing. And I'm so excited for the amazing race family that we now have with y'all and our cast and everybody else. And um, wouldn't have changed it for the world. Hopefully next time we'll win the million dollars like y'all.
Uh, well, we loved watching y'all. We were rooting for the two of you. You guys were so much fun to watch this season, and we would love to see you race again. Yes. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you in New York next month, and I look forward to celebrating your season. Bye, Bye y'all. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.